Samsung's latest One UI 5 beta is available finally for Indian users of Galaxy S22, S22 Plus and the S22 Ultra and I wasted no time in getting it installed on my S22 Ultra. Now if you want to install it, just ensure that you take a backup of your phone and it shouldn't be a primary device because there are bound to be bugs that could break your experience of using the device itself. Now the process is very simple, you need to register yourself with your Samsung account on the Samsung Members app and you will see a banner on the top or you will see a notification where it will allow you to enroll for the One UI 5 beta program. Once you enroll, you'll be registered for it and you will directly get an OTA update with all of the information with respect to the changelog and the process to get it installed on your phone. It's as simple as that. And believe you me, with One UI 5, Samsung's made a whole world of changes. The changelog, the long changelog is proof of that fact. But I have cherry picked 10 of the coolest new features that you can get with Samsung One UI 5. My name is Ashad. you're watching Track It Tech English, let's begin. Now the very first thing that you see is the changes to the visual uh, you know, design of the apps itself. The first thing I want to show you guys is certain app icons have completely changed now. For example, Samsung's very own apps have a an improved icon design language now. Apart from this, the notification shade is where a lot of the changes happen. Now you can see that the app icons themselves are much bigger and the font and the spacing and the kerning and all of that is done far better for you to be able to read the notifications better as well. I like the way it looks a lot. To me, the entire UI design feels a lot more flat right now and it's definitely an improvement over One UI 4.1. And of course, Samsung also does its own version of Material U based wallpaper theming engine, which you need to, you know, enable from the color palette inside wallpaper and style. Once you head into color palette, you will see that now you have a distinction with respect to wallpaper colors that it picks by default and some basic colors that you can choose as well. And this new Material U design now extends to a lot of different UI elements within the whole system as well. For example, the volume, uh, you know, slider that exists generally looks like this, whatever color has been picked from the wallpaper in One UI 4.1. But now it actually picks the color of the wallpaper and the wallpaper color that you've picked to change the color of the, you know, volume slider as well. Similarly, it's available in a lot of different features too. Now let me show you quickly how it looks when I change the color palette. So yeah, so now I apply this and you'll see that the color is changed. This is how it looks now. That's damn cool. And there's also this tiny little change that has happened to the edge panel as well. Now you can see the app names along with the icons. All you need to do is head into edit and you'll see from here, once you click the hamburger menu, you'll see the option to sort of show the app names, which wasn't available before, as you can see. Now, one of the coolest new additions to One UI 5 is stackable widgets. So let me add a couple of widgets first. So now you can see that I have a couple of widgets added to the screen and all you need to do to create a new stackable widget is pick one of these widgets and and just place it on top of the other one and it creates sort of like a horizontal scroll of widgets which is damn cool. You can also create a stack by just long pressing the uh, widget itself and then hit the create stack option and you can pick up whatever widget you want from here. As simple as that. One of the coolest new addition to One UI 5 is the option to add your own background wallpaper or uh, even a background video to calls that you get. Uh, you can do that for the entire uh, you know system where you can go into settings. You can check call background and from there you can change the background of the calls themselves. Or you can go to a specific contact and change the you know call background for that specific contact from their uh, you know settings page. So for Sagar, I have this, and I'll quickly show you what it looks like. And you can also have sound playing along with the video background for the call itself. Kind of funky, kind of pointless, also I would say. You know what? I'll also do the dance that these you know animated emojis are doing when you get a call. If you guys hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. And YouTube values uh, you know engagement where you know people like and comment on a video. It sort of pushes it to more uh, people using its algorithm. So please, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and maybe even comment below. Now, apart from the call UI, you also have additional features in the camera app. When you go to the camera app now you'll see that within settings itself you have now the option to add a watermark so whenever you take a new pictures you can add your own custom watermark i've written like you know this is airshots s22 ultra so i've saved that and once i take a picture you'll see that it will have that watermark whenever i take a picture there you go 
Another new addition to the camera app is that when you open pro mode now, you can see that there is a histogram, which is actually very, very useful. And apart from that, when you click on a certain, you know, specific manual mode setting, it also has this eye icon right now, which gives you information on what that specific setting can do for you. So basically speed, uh, you know, exposure variation, uh, ISO, all of this, it's, it's got clear text and information for people who want to understand how this specific setting actually works. I've always mentioned that specific hand holding is required for pro modes and this is something that Samsung's doing definitely well. Now I must say this one feature that I've been missing extensively with One UI these days is the fact that the guest mode wasn't available but with One UI 5.0 it's back. It's very simple. All you need to do is head into settings, then you have to head into accounts and then users. And you can see that you can add a guest user or add another user to the same phone, which is actually very, very handy when you have, uh, you know, many people using the same phone in the same house sometimes. Now, this is a feature I showcased in my video of the best 25 tips and tricks for Galaxy Z Fold 4. And if you haven't watched it yet, it's a really cool video. Go check that out. It should pop up right now. Now, basically there are two new additions to Samsung's lab settings you have to head into advanced features and then open labs from there that is where samsung experiments some of its features before it you know pushes it out out to more people you can see that swipe for pop-up view and swipe for split screen is now available essentially what it means is that you can just swipe from the corner to you know make it make any app open in pop-up view or you can just swipe two fingers from the bottom to open any other app in a sort of like a split screen view now talking about split screen view there's one small tiny addition that you know samsung has added with one ui 5 Point zero is that now you can add this app pair not just to uh, you know the app edge like you could do on one ui 4.1 but also to the home screen which is definitely useful so now you can see that the app pair has opened up as a separate app within the home screen itself so whenever you open that that app pair will come up as you know a split screen function and that's very very useful for a lot of folks who use certain apps in sort of a windowed mode there's a key addition to One UI 5.0 now, and that is the new security and privacy hub from which you can get access to a lot of important aspects of your phone to see what's good, what's bad about your phone itself. For example, now I head into accounts and you'll see that my, uh, you know, recent activity has uh, showcases that my password is really old that I, that, and that I need to change it. So that's definitely useful. All of these things, it's available in a hub sort of thing, which is emulating what you can do with stock Android on the Pixel as well. That's not available on on One UI 4.1. Now, since One UI 5 is based on Android 13, there are Android 13 specific features as well. For example, whenever you install a new app like I'm doing right now, that app will have to explicitly ask you whether you are giving it permission to send you notifications because otherwise it won't. So now when you open Voot, it has to explicitly ask you, like for example, you can see it right now over here that whether it can send you notifications or not. Now, obviously I don't want notifications from Wood, so don't allow. Also, the stock Android 13 feature that I particularly like is the per app language feature that you can get, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, Android 13. And that's actually very, very useful because if there are certain apps that you want to use in a specific regional language of your choice, for example, if you want to use it in Hindi or Marathi, uh, you can do that directly from here itself. All you need to do is head into app languages and whichever app supports app languages, it shows up over here. And currently it's mostly Google apps, but then this API is open to anybody to sort of use. So for example, if if I want a uh, gallery to open up in uh, Marathi, I can do that. With One UI 5, Samsung has also added the ability to do OCR within the gallery app itself, which means that whenever you open an image which has text in it, you can directly copy the text and paste it in whichever app you like. Let me quickly show you guys how that works. Now, for example, when you do this, you can see that this text exists over here and all I need to do is just long press it and it picks up that and you can copy it and paste it wherever you want to. It's copied to your clipboard now. Now the 10th and final cool new feature is actually a very detailed one and something that I haven't seen in any, uh, you know, UI experience on Android. So basically you now have an option for intelligent Wi-Fi, which gives you the, uh, you know, detailed information about your network uh, and, and the, a lot of other stuff. Basically, I'll just quickly show you guys. So once you head into Wi-Fi, you need to hit this hamburger menu and then you can see intelligent Wi-Fi right now. And you will see that it, it you have these toggles to intelligently switch to mobile data, switch to a better Wi-Fi network, turn Wi-Fi on or off automatically, show the network quality info, which is damn cool. For example, the network over here is terrible and I'll show you exactly why that is because once I show you guys, 
guys this and you will see that the network speed is just 87 mbps and if you want to dig deeper there is this intelligent wi-fi 5.0 option you just need to like keep doing that and the wi-fi developer option opens up i never knew this could be possible as well and from here you can see router specific history and time specific history and i think i'm sharing a lot of information which is supposed to be confidential so editor please blur it out now here's one bonus feature i said 10 but there's one more thing <laughs> and that is the fact that bixby routine has focus modes now i mean it did have something similar to focus modes before but now there are specific focus modes for sleep driving exercise and all of that is really nicely done so yeah you can you can use that as well with one ui 5.0 evidently samsung is trying to improve the one ui experience even further and i'm genuinely liking the experience obviously it's in beta right now so it's not very stable but still uh, in its current format you can see all of the new features that are available on uh you know one ui 5 uh, beta and uh you know the stable version should start dropping to most of the samsung premium phones by the end of october and then of course they have a uh, you know staggered rollout which will probably happen until uh you know end of 2023 and most samsung s series a series m series phones should get one ui 5.0 uh, a list of which phones are supported is not out yet once the moment that is out we will add a link in the description below so i hope you folks found this video useful if you did don't forget to share it with your friends who have samsung galaxy devices until next time this is ashad signing off keep tracking and stay safe